People always love the fantasy court. They're wondering, when are we bringing Judge Giamatti back? Well, it's today. We are in the fantasy court debating some of these egregious law-breaking fantasy rankings. And hey, if you've got your draft coming up this week and still to happen, or you you got in on the Megla Bowl, make sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Like the video, subscribe, tell your friends, and enjoy the ride. Hey, Foot Clan, summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Foot Clan, we know what you want. It's football, and it's not just a game or two. You want all of them live. But maybe you can't get DirecTV where you live. That's not a problem anymore. Stream 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out-of-market game every Sunday afternoon. NFL Sunday TV. They let you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Watch every out-of-market NFL game. You can watch DirecTV Red Zone Channel. Never miss a single touchdown. Watch the DirecTV Fantasy Zone Channel. With uh, the NFL Sunday Ticket TV Max and University Premium Package shortcuts, see replays of entire games in less than 30 minutes through the NFL Sunday Ticket app. This is how you consume all of the football. Go online to NFL Sunday Ticket TV slash Sunday Ready now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip: If you use promo code Ballers 2021 at checkout, you'll save 15 percent. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundaytickettv slash Ready. Use code BALLERS2021 to save 15%. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Friday, September 3rd. Jason Moore, Mike Wright. I'm Andy Holloway. Oh, it's Friday. Exciting episode. Got to get down on Friday. You do. You do. (laughs) Heading into the weekend, I... I don't even know my days anymore. I was pretty sure that today was Thursday when I woke up. Oh, baby. <laughs> that means football is back. I f- <laughs> found out it was Friday. So there's that. Jam-packed show today. We have been asked many times when we're returning to the fantasy courtroom of Judge Giamatti. That is happening on today's episode. A lot it's- of judgment going to be happening here today. It's tough. More to- than normal. It's tough to get a judge like you know Judge Giamatti when he's just – so wealthy. He's like, I don't, I don't want to work Works anymore. Works one day a year. Yeah. Uh, generally, it's September 3rd. <laughs> and so he is in uh, – court is in session today on the, on the podcast. We have some news to talk about. Out of the gate, I want to let people know we will not have a new episode on Monday, on Labor Day. So uh, everyone here at the office is going to be spending that time with their families. And we'll be back on Tuesday. We have Smoke Fire. We've got uh, maybe our Super Bowl picks on Tuesday. Ooh. Undrafted Jim's show next week. And then, my goodness. Oh, There's oh, football yes. time. I mean, it's football time. Starts of the week. All the matchup breakdowns. The Boom Boom Kicker is back for another season. Keeps getting renewed. I uh, mean, they keep picking it up. When the ratings are that hot, you, you've got no choice but to renew at any rate. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. The community is jointhefoot.com, and you can jump in the Megalobold. There's still two days before our first draft day, megalobold.com for that. Also, before I move into uh, the next segment, I want to let people know Mike's Ultimate Value Hit Squad article will hit the website today, thefantasyfootballers.com, if you want to check that out. He goes round by round identifying his favorite values for the many of you drafting tonight tomorrow, Sunday, and then a lot of Labor Day drafts. And, and. Oh, oh the Megalobowl. The Megalobowl. Yeah. That draft is still happening I all know. next week. Yeah, that was the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. We've got draft times on all four days. So, uh, lots going on. It's go time for fantasy football, but it's also Friday. 
Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday we give away a special item to a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. This week's item from pristineauction.com is a Clyde Edwards Alaire signed jersey. That's Jason's my guy in the oh, winner. Yeah. The winner from Patreon is JS. Oh. Just two initials. Wow. Very secretive. Yeah, just JS. Could, could be, be John a, Smith. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. It could be. <laughs> that's right. It could be Jerry Seinfeld. We cannot we cannot confirm this, uh, but I mean the odds are probably pretty good that this is Jerry Seinfeld. So you can head over to pristineauction.com. Put him at like seventy five percent. Right. I mean, think about it. If you were Jerry Seinfeld, right. would you want your whole name out Who there? Who are oh. these people? <laughs> You'd probably want to stay under wraps. All right, let's hop into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Saquon Barkley has a strong chance to play week one against Denver, according to Jeremy Fowler of ESPN. Are you playing him week one if you drafted him? If he's active and I drafted him, which I did and I regret it, I will, uh, I will absolutely be playing him if he is out there in week one. I don't think you really have a choice. If you drafted him, you took him in round one or super luckily at the beginning of round two, got to right. play those players. I do not expect to have him at full strength by any means. I mean, you you know, if you're penciling down what your, uh, you know, projected points would be, I'm thinking it's more, you know. I'm hoping for 15 points. I'm not hoping for a uh, 25-point Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey experience. But I also have never received such optimistic good news that I took as bad news <laughs> more than that report. It's like, Hey, good news, everyone. He has a strong chance to play week one. I was like, that sounds so there's a chance he doesn't play. I can follow it up with some more news that's exactly like that. What's happening? Kenny Galladay, who's been dealing with his hamstring, practiced Thursday. Afterward, he says he's improving. Oh, that's good. Uh, that's that's great news. He's he's not fully improved. No, he's but, improving. I mean, the because hamstring the, injuries never happen to oh, recur. My goodness, man. To be a Giants reporter right now, you're just trying to find happiness. Ron Rivera says he's confident that Curtis Samuel will play in week one. This one I actually believe uh, because it's been a constant con – like he hasn't actually been out there, but I think that's the plan all along. He knows the system. He knows the offense, and um, I think he will be there week one. He further added to his uh, words that basically if he's out there, he's a full go. Uh, he'll okay. either be full or he won't be out there. Brandon Ayuk looked unencumbered. Oh. <laughs> While running sprints on the side uh, yesterday. Should be a full go in week one. Uh, he was not, not carrying anything no on his back. No watermelons in yeah. his hands. Nothing. CD Lamb was activated from the COVID list. The Falcons signed Wayne Gallman. This one's actually, I think, a big piece of news. And they waved Quadri Olison. Wayne Gallman is a fine running back. He it, maybe he's, he's not a as, fine lad. He's maybe he's not a superstar, but he's a better running back than Olison. And the and the the big argument for Mike Davis as a fantasy running back option in that fifth round is there's nobody else there to challenge Mike Davis. Yeah, the, I mean they gave him the a contract, which is a, a point in his favor. But you didn't worry about the competition, taking Mike Davis off the field. Wayne Gallman is someone who can actually take Mike Davis off the field. I think that this lowers the ceiling that, that Mike Davis is going to be, you know, that 250-plus touch running back. He, uh, Davis is still the guy, but he's going to get spelled more frequently now, I believe, once Gallman is fully uh, injected into this offense. I, I would add to it that this is important news not only for uh, Mike Davis but for another running back, Gus Edwards, because the Baltimore Ravens tried to put a claim in on Bruce Wayne Gallman, which is um, worth noting. Right, they are looking. They, did are they put it on Gallman. No, they did it on Royce, Royce Freeman. Freeman. Oh, I'm sorry, Royce Freeman. Yes, you got to the next blurb. I, they're right next to Take each other. Take it away, Jason. So uh, the next blurb is when everybody fights for Royce Freeman in the NFL. Yes, uh, a couple of teams placed uh, waiver prior, uh, waiver claims on Royce Freeman. That was the Baltimore Ravens and the Las Vegas Ra the Raiders. Yes. <laughs> but the Panthers claimed him. That's yes, true. They had and, priority. And so they they received the gift that is Royce Freeman from the waiver wire. 
Uh, I mean, I would. Ex- I have no expectations that the Ravens, who lost their main runner, would be seeking another running oh, back. That would have been. I would have gift. loved it if Royce Freeman signed with the Ravens. Royce Freeman, I like. I think I made the comments as as soon as he was waived. I said, "Well, count down till Royce Freeman's a Baltimore Raven." Because of, yes, of course, they need another body. They need someone who's competent, and Royce Freeman's a competent running back. This, him going to the Panthers, that's interesting. Does he take over the number two job of, of Chuba Hubbard? Unlikely. Like, Hubbard looks pretty locked in there. The more interesting thing here is that the Raiders put a claim in on Royce Freeman. It doesn't. It doesn't surprise me at all. This was the Theo Riddick Raiders, right? They, this was. Uh, they they dra- they grab a couple running backs that they end up cutting. Or that end up retiring to get away right before right. the league starts. So I, you know, they Jalen Richard is on IR, right? That is correct. Short so maybe term. a three week rental it would have been for them. Yeah, that's possible. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Speaking of news, yes, grab the Sleeper app because they have the breaking alerts channel. It's faster than every other source. That's how you see that breaking. News about injuries and important pickups, and it's another one of those pieces we say never not working. I mean, this is how you get an advantage on your league mates. A lot of people have instant waivers that you can grab a player. <laughs> As well, I was just gonna say, I was gonna say, if you have open waivers, then you have to have the sleep wrap for your news and alerts because whoever gets the info first gets the player first on mm-hmm. open waivers. Plus the sound effect, right? Oh, <laughs> I love Michael Keaton. I feel like it should be illegal to make that sound without breaking news afterwards. You have to find something. All right. uh, Are we ready to hop into the fantasy court? Yes. All rise. Okay. Oh, the judge. All right. Well, you know, when you haven't worn the robes in a while, you get a. You feel frisky? you You get a big head. All right, here we go. The fantasy court. With Judge Giamatti. Plaintiffs Andy Holloway and Mike Wright are accusing Jason Moore of aiding and abetting the mob by propping up the fantasy value of Dallas wide receiver to Amari Cooper. All right, Your Honor. Mike, if you don't mind, I'll just take this on behalf of both of us. I would have it no other way. Your Honor, this man has lost his mind. Mm, Yes, I have. Weeks ago, he was going on about my guy, CeeDee Lamb, and now he's got the gumption to keep Amari Cooper inside his top 12, a place where he has finished just once in six seasons, just one time. Erroneous. This duplicitous creature must make a decision. (laughs) Does he love CeeDee or does he love Amari? Cats can't be dogs, broccoli can't be ice cream, and both these guys ain't finishing inside the top 12. Look, Cooper's a great player. I'll admit it. But quite simply doesn't finish at this level on the season, mostly because he has frequently had a touchdown problem. He's the DJ Moore or Robert Woods of Dallas. He will not get credit for touchdowns just because he shimmy shakes himself for an eight-yard first down. And in his career, Your Honor, volatility is a problem. In six years, he's had back-to-back weeks inside the top 24 six times over 93 career games. That's not a small sample size, and that is a volatile man. Remember that word, volatile, when you think about him because it haunts fantasy teams. And true, he is beloved by Dak, but Dak will find his heart fluttering. For C.D. Lamb during a breakout campaign, Michael Gallup still trotting down the sidelines. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I don't think Amari Cooper is a great player. I do. He's amazing, but he's not the level of amazing the defendant's ranking seems to convey. I rest my case. Oh, oh yes. Oh, Your Honor. What an argument. <laughs> Your Honor, I respect uh, the opinions of my cohorts here. Objection! Objection! <laughs> But I would like to uh, outlay some facts. Uh, Fact number one is that every single year, without question, without skipping, there are multiple teams with multiple wide receiver ones for fantasy. And there is no team more destined for having two wide receivers in the top 12 than the Dallas Cowboys. They clearly would have done it or could have done it last year, but Dak went down. 
Dak was injured. So when we talk about the fantasy finish of Amari Cooper and he, how he didn't finish as a wide receiver one, I would like to counter that with uh, evidence A here. He finished as the <laughs> exhibit, exhibit A. <laughs> as I want to help you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's because I, I respect you as a person. Um, <laughs> exhibit A is that he finished as the wide receiver 16 last year without Dak Prescott, with Andy Dalton and a hodgepodge of fourth and 15th stringers uh, playing quarterback. Here's the reality. With Dak, he has 29 games. He's averaged eight and a half receptions and 80 yards a game. That would be 145 targets, 1,360 yards. He is only 27 years old. He is uh, a few months older than Calvin Ridley. He has the fifth most receiving yards ever for a wide receiver before turning 27 ahead of Julio Jones. He has the same exact yards per target as Calvin Johnson. And here's the thing. You can have him for the lowest average draft of his career outside of his rookie year. He has never been as low as wide receiver 16. That's where you're drafting him now, and he will outperform it with Dak in tow. All right, Judge. It's time for you to make your official ruling. All right. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff. Oh, Andy my Holloway. goodness. Oh, man. Um, can I just say something real quick? Uh, Owl, you know the the clapping track that we have, the cheers? Mm -hmm. I would like um, to add a booze, like a crowd <laughs> booing. Right. Terrible decisions. Get that on my soundboard immediately because the crowd is upset and mad at this dummy, dummy judge. Please restrain yourself, sir. The court <laughs> will. will hold you in contempt. <laughs> it will do no such and thing. And the, the judge, from what I understand, <laughs> comes from Dallas. So uh, Yeah. He did you... He's at least a Dallas he ain't no fan. no homer. Mm. All right, let's move on. Plaintiffs Andy Holloway and Jason Moore are accusing Mike Wright of disrespecting the elderly in the form of arson by burning the resume of perennial top 15 wide receiver Brandon Cooks. Oh, <laughs> it's time. <laughs> It is time. All right. We'll see how I how it goes here. Defend, you know, look, sometimes you have what to. What word was that? Jason's the plane. Jason is representing myself as well. That's right. Um, Are you sure you want to do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. I'm second chair and I'm scared. It's, it's, it's hard sometimes to defend someone that the, the position looks dicey, but it is by law something that has to happen. And I will happily make the case for Brandon Cooks, first of all. Brandon Cooks is a really, really good wide receiver. Like, in real life, he is actually a good wide receiver. He was a first-round draft pick in the NFL, and all he's done for his entire career is been really good. He has five 1,000-yard receiving seasons and only seven years in the NFL. The only two years he hasn't was his rookie year, um, which is natural, and two years ago when he missed multiple games due to injury. Uh, speaking of the injuries of 2019, one of the best abilities in the NFL, especially for fantasy finishes, is availability. And Cooks has actually played in 93 of 96 potential games over the last six seasons. He's on the field, which is why his fantasy finishes are wide receiver 14, wide receiver 9, wide receiver 12, wide receiver 13, then wide receiver 62, the aforementioned year he missed multiple games. And then wide receiver 15, which was last year. I know, I know, I know. His team sucks. His quarterback sucks now. But here's the thing. Every single year, there are good fantasy wide receivers who play on bad teams or with bad quarterbacks who finish well because they're the only wide receiver on their team. They're the only wide receiver worth throwing the ball to, and here's some examples. So last year, you had Brandon Cooks as the wide receiver 15. You had Marvin Jones as the wide receiver 17 on a bad Lions team. You had Nelson Aguilar, who was really the only wide receiver worth throwing the ball to uh, in Vegas as a top 30 wide receiver. In 2020, you had Devontae Parker, the only guy there, who was the wide receiver 7. You had DJ Chark, the only wide receiver there, with Mike Glennon and Gardner Minshew as the wide receiver 16, and John Brown was the wide receiver 20. Remember, that was with Josh Allen when he was um, inaccurate, you know, inaccurate, 58% uh, football I remember that. thrower. I remember that. How about 2019? You remember T.Y. Hilton? 
You go, oh, he's good. Well, so is Brandon Cooks. But he had a last-minute quarterback replacement with Jacoby Brissett. He was the wide receiver 14. And Ryan Finley and Andy Dalton had Tyler Boyd as the wide receiver 17 because the next highest target on that team was Auden Tate. Like, when you're the only guy and you play a full season, you're going to be good. And so I ask you, who's it going to be this year? If not Brandon Cooks, then who? He's the only wide receiver worth throwing the ball to, and he will outperform his fantasy ADP. Faux shizzle, <laughs> your honor. <laughs> okay, that kind of threw me up there. <laughs> the, you know, I was not God, expecting that. That's my <laughs> case. All right, your honor. Uh, that, was a, uh, that was a compelling argument from uh, my esteemed colleague over here, and he talked a lot about – you know, re receivers catching passes, but here, here is the problem, Your Honor. Those passes have to be thrown, and Tyrod Taylor simply doesn't throw the ball. He's only been a starter, like, as long as he has been in the NFL, he's actually only been a starter for three years, and those three years in Buffalo. Your Honor, Tyrod Taylor, in those three years, averaged 18 completions per game. In three years as a starter, he surpassed the 23 completion mark five times. There will be absolutely no passing volume for Brandon Cooks because Tyrod Taylor just doesn't do that. He also pulls down the ball and he runs it. And on top of that, his favorite go-to is actually the tight end position. Your Honor, Charles Clay was frequently the top target for Tyrod Taylor. Let's look at the wide receivers, though, that Taylor has supported. Yes, the Lizard King himself had a very strong fantasy finish with mm. Tyrod Taylor. Interesting. Yeah, you know, not, not bad. Uh, but then the next year, Robert Woods. What, your Honor? Uh, no, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't talk to the judge. Uh, uh, <laughs> jury. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, jury out there. Would you consider Robert Woods to be a good wide receiver? Because when he was the number one guy for Tyrod Taylor, he finished as the wide receiver 68. Your Honor, Sammy Watkins is the only player of note that Tyrod Taylor has actually supported at the wide receiver position. And with that volume, I just do not see a way or a world that Brandon Cooks has any sort of fantasy value. On top of that, you have Nico Collins emerging as a, as a third-round rookie for this team. Jordan I'm, Akins. Jordan, that, yeah, that's, that was the point. No, I, I actually they, buy they that. They cut Darren Fells. All right, sorry, why am I on your team? <laughs> I, was, I object to was, this whole argument because Tyrod why, Taylor's playing two games. <laughs> that was, you, you, let me get to my, my final Objections argument. The judge is letting everything middle. go right now. <laughs> There's no whole this, bar. This, there are no rules in this courtroom. This whole court's out of order. <laughs> Jordan Akins is very interesting. Charles Clay, I'm telling you, after Sammy Watkins left, Charles Clay was the leading target for Tyrod Taylor because Tyrod is just not that good of a quarterback, and maybe he leads this team to a couple victories. I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that Tyrod Taylor is the starting quarterback the entire time for the Houston Texans. And then what do we got? What do we got here? We got a rookie not even drafted with any sort of good draft capital coming in? Your Honor, Brandon Cooks is on a train destined for disaster. Ooh. Also... Is that uh is that cool water? Is that uh is that brute I'm smelling over here? You smell pleasant. I think you do that every year. What? Uh, sir. <laughs> How dare you? The last time you were in this courtroom, I think you tried to flatter me. He didn't even end his argument with for shizzle. Yeah, I mean I Which did. is traditional. For rizzle. Uh I think we have a ruling. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff, Jason. Oh, all Moore. right. Eat it. Oh, oh fantastic. Um that's great. So Before much we for get those compliments, yeah. Be, well, they weren't compliments. I believe he said he was wearing brute, <laughs> which <laughs> is like a seven dollar <laughs> bottle of awful cologne that you get sure, kids is that, as a. Is that your car? <laughs> I don't even know what people make anymore. Oh man, is that Axe body spray? We missed a big opportunity here, fellas. What did we miss? Well, what we missed is coming to the fantasy court today in our. Indochino suits. Oh my like goodness! Like real lawyers and businessmen. If you got to go to the the lawyer room, uh, you want an Indochino suit. <laughs> the lawyer room? 
<laughs> yes, no, that's what I call it. I, you know, I, I don't like this. The court feels a little. I don't speak legalese. I, don't, I focus on for bird law. For in the lawyer room. That's right. But listen, guys, we've been telling you for a long time about Indochino suits. They are perfection because they are made for your body. They are tailored to your shoulders, your arms, your gut, your leg length, your torso. It is fantastic. And when you get these suits. They are perfectly fitting because they're made for you. And unlike thousands and thousands of dollars that you pay for custom tailored suits at a lot of places, you're talking about high quality suits starting at just $399. That is with all the customizations included. And they have more than that too. Once your measurements are in there, I've ordered pants. I've ordered some chinos. I've ordered some shirts that just come perfectly fitting they look great you can choose all of it and right now they are open at select nordstrom stores uh, so you can have even more ways to get fitted and have personalized clothing find your nearest location at indochino.com and right now you can get 50 bucks off any purchase of 3.99 or more by using the code footballers at checkout so that's 50 bucks off a purchase of 399 dollars or more at indochino.com that's i-n-d-o-c-h-i-n-o.com promo code footballers and Foot Clan, we know you want to keep yourself safe. You want to keep your, your home safe, your family safe. And the best way to do that, it's simple. It is simply safe. They have been keeping our studio gear tight. Like I don't worry about it. When we go home, we know that Simply Safe is watching our stuff, and they're going to alert us at any moment should any shenanigans happen uh, at the studio. Including power outages. Simply Safe sent me an email the second the power went out, although I knew it went out because we were in the dark. <laughs> but they're on top of it, uh, and they make people feel safe. They've been doing that uh, for over 15 years. The thing is, Simply Safe, uh, they make it easy. It takes about two minutes to customize a system on their website, simplysafe.com slash footballers. They have highly trained security experts ready whenever you need them, whether that's during a fire, uh, a burglary, medical emergency, or even just when you're setting up the system, they are there to help you. They have your back at all times. And as a listener, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and get your first month free when you sign up for interactive monitoring service, just visit simplysafe.com slash footballers to customize your system and start protecting your home and family. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. All right, I just got word from the clerk. There is one more case mm. that the judge has to handle. Back to the lawyer room. Back to the <laughs> lawyer room we go. Plaintiffs Mike Wright and Jason Moore are accusing Andy Holloway of identity theft by ranking Trevor Lawrence like a quarterback who's already been there and done that. Your Honor, you continue to smell very fresh. I just want to I just want to put is that is that a citrus? Is that a very fresh for the summertime. Your Honor, Trevor Lawrence was the number 1 overall pick for good reason. He's called the best prospect since Andrew Luck. But he was the number 1 pick for a reason because the Jacksonville Jaguars stink. They had to clear house, and they brought in a whole new cast of characters, including head coach Urban Meyer. And Urban Meyer's walking in like, like a fresh face, thinking, you know, whatever I did in college, that's certainly going to work at the pro level. We've seen that work out several times before when these college coaches Don't think they can. Don't say Chip Kelly. Don't say Chip Kelly. <laughs> there is a huge laundry list of college coaches you can point to who have tuck tailed and ran back to the safety of the NCAA after just a few seasons. Urban Meyer loves gadget plays. He loves screens. He loves RPOs. Is that going to turn into fantasy gold for Mr. Trevor Lawrence? I do not believe it will. And look at the surrounding cast. It's It's been said, well, we think that Perhaps he has some good weapons. The defendant himself has spent an entire offseason besmirching the name of DJ Chark, who is slotted to be the number one wide receiver for this team. Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones is about to sign up for his AARP card because the man is 72 years old. And then you have LaVisca Chenault, who's doing out there doing his best Percy Harvin impression. That doesn't turn into fantasy success for a quarterback and let's look at the the rookies who have actually succeeded in the past 
eight years. In the last eight years, we've seen four rookie quarterbacks finish as top 15 options, but they're all padded, not by passing touchdowns, but by rushing touchdowns. Jameis had six as a rookie. Dak had six as a rookie. Kyler, four. And Justin Herbert himself, the only way that Justin Herbert actually saved himself by finishing so high was 234 carries and five rushing touchdowns. Yes, Your Honor, Trevor Lawrence, he has some wheels, but in two of his three seasons as a college quarterback, he finished with under 200 rushing yards. I am not going to place my wagers in fantasy football on the fact that Trevor Lawrence will somehow end up with five or more rushing touchdowns. He's a fine player. I can't wait to see him perform on the field, but Your Honor, fantasy gold is not in the cards for this season. Hmm. Hmm. For shizzle. The defendant is reeling. Your Honor. <laughs> oh, no. What is this? Is this Atticus Finch? Can I interest you? Where is this the colonel? In giving a second glance <laughs> at a young man that is six foot, five inches tall, has a history of success at every level, despite the high expectations he walked into, one that is competitive and intelligent and a born leader, with legs capable of extending a play into the land of bonus fantasy points. Are those chicken legs? <laughs> Your Honor, look past the external appearance, the teal, gold, and black epidermis, and look into the heart of a man who has dominated his opponent since birth, his golden locks free-flowing in the wind <laughs> as his golden arm <laughs> eviscerates his opponents. I will give you 943 reasons why this fantasy value has a chance to materialize, because he ran for 943 yards and 18 touchdowns at Clemson, where I hearken from. 90 touchdowns, 17 interceptions through the air should make your honor weak in the knees. He joins the professional level with the talent that the prosecutor brought up, the juniors, DJ, Marvin, LaVisca. Yes, I know he was playing against your beloved Cowboys to end the preseason, but he went 11 for 12, carved him up, 139 and... Two, including a... Carved him like a fresh chicken <laughs> covered in herbs and spices. Including a uh, footwork extraordinaire precision pass to LaVisca Chenault for a touchdown that reminded me of Aaron Rodgers. A simple arm flick after some nifty footwork for a six-point Sally. Fantasy players... Yeah, that's right, a six-point Sally. There's mm. no salads in here. That's it's a finger Sally. good. <laughs> Look, fantasy players should give this man a chance. Take him late in drafts just in case and not be surprised when he makes you forget that Urban Meyer is his coach. These hooligans, uh, I'm talking to you two. <laughs> Guilty. These two hooligans have Trevor Lawrence outside their top 20, which betrays a precedent set by every number one pick over the last 10 years. Your Honor, here are the fantasy finishes for every rookie quarterback drafted number one that played a full season. Objection. Seven, I don't want to hear this argument. <laughs> seven, 13, eight, and four. When they go start to finish, they finish inside the top 13. Lawrence is being forgotten, but please write this wrong. Also, bless your heart. I rest my case. <laughs> All right. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff. Oh, my oh right. yes. I'm surprised. I thought Why? that last, that last. I think it was the accent. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, look, it was. I didn't. I didn't really follow. I was just so enthralled with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Once you brought up the Colonel, <laughs> I was. I was at KFC. But the last numbers you brought up, just talking fantasy football, are actually pretty convicting in the sense that. That number one pick, when they play the full season, they do outperform where we have him ranked right now, and he does have some wheels. So what's funny is I he, made a I made a, he, I made a note. I'm going to move Lawrence up. Yeah, the player I left off of there. So the four that I mentioned, they played 16 full games, so they were seven, 13, eight, and four. But Baker actually per game fit the mold as well. He just came in in game three, so I didn't count him. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got him at 16. I feel good about that. Now I'm now I can't let the accent go. All I know is uh, we, I don't know we how to get out of this. So. How do I get out of this? All right, uh, you guys want to do some mailbag? Show. Sure. 
mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. It's Friday, man. Yeah. We're mailing it in. I was going to say, it definitely <laughs> feels like Friday. That was a shoo, shoo. <sighs> All right. Into the mailbag we go. If you have a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline 302464-TFFB. We actually have a voicemail today, Brooks. Yes, sir. Let's hit it. Hey, amigos. This is the little yellow chickadee from the Steel City, a.k.a. Pittsburgh. What are three DSTs that you're targeting with a great week one matchup? Thanks, Yins, guys. Peace. Yeah. Uh, did he say chickadee? Yeah. Look, did, I, did I catch that right? Tuned out on purpose. Uh, San Francisco is one that I've targeted. That's the number one target. Those I also I, I like New England. I like New England at home against Miami. What What's the other one? Denver, yeah, maybe? There's there's three that I've been getting with regularity. You named two of them. Uh, San Francisco opens with just such a great schedule, and they're a good defense. Um, but Minnesota is another one that is – you yep. can get them in every draft. I mean – Pretty much they usually go undrafted or they're drafted at like the 10th, 11th, 12th defense off the board. I expect their defense under Zimmer to be a much, much improved defense this year. And you're starting the year against Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals oh in his first action, real, real action back from that horrific knee injury. So, and yeah, it, I'm, I'm down with that. And if you want to join me in the dumpster – where I am currently slated in our, our league of record, I drafted, uh, as I think I grabbed the last DST available, the Carolina Panthers, not necessarily a defense that ins inspires fear for an offense, but they're at home, and they are against the Jets. I, maybe Zach Wilson is great, but I will bet against that rookie quarterback making his first start on the road. It's funny how week one, it is so difficult to play a defense that is per perceived bad. Right. But week three, when we're streaming the position, mm -hmm. I don't care who the de – like, you can play a bad defense against a horrific offense. Um, you know, so, <laughs> you know, like – That's what scares me about Minnesota is, like, we hope that they're better this year, but last year they were atrocious. They were, mm -hmm. like – they gave up the fourth most passing yards in the league, and it was like – uh, are you that confident that Burrow is going to struggle in Week One? I am more confident in uh, I am more confident in Minnesota being a good defense than I am in Cincinnati being a bad offense. So it's actually okay. uh, the the other side of the argument. But what about like would you play the Jaguars defense against the Texans? I mean, all the arguments Mike made are pretty fair about the Texans being a uh, on a bad train. I, I doubt I would do that, okay. but yeah. I we, get it. We do. I, I don't think it deserves the button, but a little bit of breaking news. The Raiders, they're at it again. Another running back? <laughs> Another running back. They're, they took uh, Peyton Barber off mm. the Washington practice squad. They're always on the hunt. <laughs> Gruden loves running backs. Yeah. Except, you know, like the really good ones. He doesn't like to play them all the time. All right, Kevin in Michigan, are we sleeping on Jameis Winston? The last time he was a starter, he was a top three option, but he seems buried on consensus rankings. What am I missing? You're missing what Jameis is Winston, which is Winston. <laughs> sure, yeah, that uh, was a good one. That was. Um, but what? Mike Evans is missing. Yeah. Chris Godwin is missing. Yep. Um, and Michael Thomas is missing. Yep. Uh, the most important thing, Bruce Arians is missing. Yeah, I mean, I mean he was he never had a fantasy finish of relevance at all until he was chucking it like a wild man under Bruce Arians. Yes. And uh, what thirty interceptions. Yeah. That sounds like a joke now. That he threw 30? Yeah, I was like, am I, am I lying? It was nope. 30, right? Yep, he was in the 30 for 30 club. And now the team he's on now, he's missing Michael Thomas for the first six weeks. Yes. That is still true. <laughs> did you guys say that? Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. <laughs> yep. Oh, I did, like that wait. he jumped in. I just don't like that he said the same thing. Is this how you were listening when I gave <laughs> my argument? <laughs> the court, the rulings are final. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have to take it up to the Supreme Court. Appeal. I just want to see this lawyer room. I want to know how, how decked out that lawyer room is. A lot of mahogany. Um, okay. Christopher in Palm Bay, Florida. Should I feel like an idiot for stacking Seahawks wide receivers? Standard six-point touchdown league. Talking Lockett and Metcalf. I mean, your upside on any given week is tremendous, but your downside of 
I love the value of Tyler Lockett in the fifth round, but we've seen so many times where Russell Wilson in the passing offense vanishes for half a season, and if you are locked into that and it happens again, that, that will be a a big problem. Yeah. But in the in the range of outcomes is they don't vanish for in a, for half a season and they're great all year long and then you're solid but you are that's very volatile. Do you realize what they did? If you want a bad sign for the passing game in Seattle, did you see what their 53 man cuts looked like? I did not. They kept four wide receivers total. So Metcalf, oh, 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 oh. Lockett, Swain and Eskridge, right? They kept instead of another wide receiver Five running backs, Carson, Penny, Alex Collins, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer. It was like, it was shocking because they could have let, no, we got to keep Alex Collins on this team versus a fifth wide receiver. This because their running backs keep getting hurt. I think this is a product of they're scared now. Yeah, but they, how do running backs get hurt? But by being when, used by up, being played, damn it, yeah. always. Uh, I would just like to throw that uh, the name Gerald Everett back out again if they have sure. no other wide receivers. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, Tim in Cleveland, do you like Waller or and Kittle at the 2-3 turn after taking a running back? Is there an and in there? There is an and. I did see somebody. They wanted to keep these guys away from their league mates. Yeah, but that's... I mean, that, that's the cut off your nose despite your face. It also helps everybody else in the league yeah, when you do that. Right? I, I assume that this is talking about do you like taking Waller and do you like taking Kittle as opposed to do you like taking Waller and Kittle. Oh, okay. Um, because I think we're universally a yes on Waller or Kittle mm -hmm. at the 2-3 turn and universally a no way on Waller and Kittle at Correct. the 2-3 turn. Joe in New Zealand. Oh, bonjour. Should I trade Daryl Henderson straight up for Robbie Anderson? A no. little Henderson Anderson. No, I would not. No. What about Darnell Anderson for Robbie Anderson? He's even better. I'd keep him. <laughs> All right. Uh, still confident? In, uh, maybe a good time to talk about Daryl and Sony and confidence levels there. I, I, mean, I mentioned Sony's getting projected for like double digits on different platforms. Definitely not as confident in Henderson pre-Sony getting there, but... I mean, uh, until like his ADP didn't really get out of control, so I was fine where he was being drafted with with the potential upside and McVay talking up Henderson. So Sony's in a a very interesting late round target for a running back who could become something. But Henderson's been on the team for multiple years. I have to project that he is the guy who knows the offense and he's ready to go. And what I am very confident in is that this is going to be a great offense that Sean McVay yeah. is going to have a lot of points uh, scored. And and so you could end up, and not only is it a good offense, but it's a good offense that has always had a productive fantasy running back. And, you know, if you if you take whoever it is, I mean, obviously last year, some games it was Henderson early. Right. It was Cam late. But if you just take the wide receiving uh, team score, it's usually great. It reminds me a little bit of, like, what we saw for so long with the Saints. When you had Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara there, they were they were both valuable because it was a good offense with a good offensive head coach that used the running backs. And so I, I think both players could be valuable this year. Sine in Vancouver, Canada says, Bonjour. in a dynasty league, would you trade away Chase Edmonds to receive Darnell Mooney? PPR dynasty league. If yes. I could afford it a running back, I would do it. And that is a good distinction to call out because obviously if you need if you need running back, you just can't you you can't play for the future and say, okay, long term, Darnell Mooney, I think he has a better career than Chase Edmonds. But, you know, but then by doing so, you don't get to compete for a championship this year because maybe your running back depth is not there. But if it is, I would prefer Mooney. And in my experience, there is really there's no teams in dynasty that have that luxury of like oh i have so many running backs like if you have it i mean at least this is just ours our dynasty league so maybe anecdotal if you have two competent starting running backs in our league you're ahead of the game like th having three is is barely ever seen all right uh 
couple of reminders I want to get out there for the listeners. Uh, I mentioned we don't have a Monday show, but if you are just joining us, if you're new to the Foot Clan, if you're uh, just subscribing to the show, I encourage you, there are some episodes that you could go back and listen to, like our Top 10 Tips and Tricks episode. Mm -hmm. Um, You can you can go back and look at some of these that we've come out re with recently, Fantasy MVP show, uh, the My Guys episodes. So you can check those out. We'll be back on Tuesday with a brand new one. And uh, as we head into the weekend, one final reminder, we're up over 13,000 of you inside the Megla Bowl. So it'd be cool oh, to get on. to 15,000 yeah. and see who can bring home that top prize, get a spot in next year's listener league, get a big old trophy, run around your town celebrating, holding it up above your head. Pants optional. Pant shirt optional. Maybe, maybe make some new friends. Maybe sure. Maybe you find a lifelong friend in, in the Mega Bowl League. Your best friend. <laughs> Your new best friend is waiting for you at megalobowl.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Judge Giamatti, for once again gracing us with your presence. Uh, see you in a year. Maybe sooner. We'll see. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan football is almost here, and there is no better place to get in on the action than with DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. At DraftKings is your one-stop shop to make it rain all season long. It, to bring you even closer to the action, DraftKings is giving all new players a free shot at a million dollars during week one. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching a game quite like having a free shot at a huge cash prize. And while you're perfecting your daily fantasy skills, don't Forget to check out DraftKings free-to-play pools where there's even more cash up for grabs. Head to the app now, download DraftKings now, and use the code BALLERS. For a limited time, new players can get a free shot at a million dollars during week one. So don't miss out. Make sure you enter the code BALLERS to get that free shot at a million dollars in prizes on your first deposit. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details.